Jesus. All right, all right, let's waste no time over here today. Let's hop right into it. Who's ready to seize this opportunity? Who's ready to make some money? Print some cheddar. Cash some pennies while everyone else is scared. I'm ready. I've been dying to get in here. I've been dying to see what kind of opportunity lies out there. And I smell opportunity with this situation in the Suez Canal. Who knows some more about that, but I don't know. Because I only know a little bit. I know the very base, just the things, you know, the ship stuck, evergreen, it's got billions of dollars that are getting blocked right now in the Suez Canal. What specifically is getting blocked? Well, I know there's a lot of oil on that ship, and oil prices I'd expect to rise. And so you need uh, energy alternatives, I think. Well, this is my, my initial thought, is there's going to be a lot of uh, opportunity for alternative energy um, solutions. Maybe renewable, solar, um, anything that's going to fuel, you know, a country uh, in the next however many weeks it's going to take to clear this shit up because it's going to it's going to be a while. This is this is setting up to be a pretty scary domino effect. So as you can see, we got a ship stuck right here. Uh, I don't really know the full story there. Anyone else know more about the Suez Canal than I do? Scott, how you doing? Savvy, how you doing today? You making some money? takes about 13 to 15 hours, okay. The UK powers. So Egypt powers the canal. Flat for the day, I'm pretty flat for the day too. Uh, crypto's making me money, but you know, flat everywhere else. Wind, run it aground. Okay. Oh, 
Or you think SV would be a unicorn? SV, is that the um, ticker savvy? Ability, high winds, this may be Evergreen, Evergivens, Evergiven, is that what it's called? Okay, let me change this. And we'll save that. All right. Portability, high winds. So maybe the ever given stack containers act like sails, or the need to push it off course led to its grounding. Salvagers have tried a number of remedies, pulling it with tugboats, dredging underneath the hull, and using the front end loader to excavate the eastern embankment. Bow stuff with the vessel size and weight, 200,000 metric tons. That's fucking huge. Um, and frustrated salvagers as Thursday night. Some marine salvage experts have said nature might succeed where tugs and dredgers have failed. A seasonal high tide on Sunday or Monday could add roughly 18 inches of depth to the canal, perhaps floating the ship. That would be great. Wow. Okay, this is what we want. Thank you, Savvy. Appreciate you as always, my friend. You are the man. Um, is that the, the ticker? Is that SV? Or, um, give me some more insight there, and I will definitely take a look right after this. I'm just catching up to speed on current events that could make us money. Um, what are the ramifications? This is what we want. It depends on how long the canal, which is believed to handle about 10% of global maritime uh, commercial traffic, is closed. Trade winds, a maritime uh, industry news publication said that with more than a hundred ships waiting for the first canal it could take more than a week just for that backlog to clear prolonged closure could be hugely expensive for the owners of ships waiting to transit the canal some ship owners have already have decided to cut their losses and reroute vessels that have been bound for the canal around africa's cape with good hope instead okay so that's going to cost money um that'll affect those companies for sure uh people waiting on the shipments of course um the owner of Ever Given is already facing millions of dollars in insurance claims, holy shit. And the cost of emergency salvage services. Egypt's government, which received $5.61 billion in revenue from canal tolls in 2020, also has a vital interest in refloating the Ever Given and reopening the waterway. No, that didn't give us really what we wanted. I want to know what's on there. Yes, with Aero Farms. Okay, Spring Valley Acquisition Corp. Got you. Thank you. Let's take a look. If anyone can find out what's on the uh, the Ever Given, that would be great. You know, what kind of cargo is on there? What are people? What's getting blocked on just that ship? And then obviously you've got the other ships that are going to go around. Selena, how are you? But yeah, we want to know what kind of cargo is on this ship because the other ones they can reroute, and then it's just going to be a slight delay. This is you know, one of the biggest container ships, um, you know, in the world, and, and certainly in Egypt, uh, or in, in Europe, sorry. Um, whatever cargo's on there, it's going to be stuck until they get, you know, this, this situation figured out, and it sounds like they're trying a lot of stuff, and um, if they're, they're banking on nature's good graces to maybe be the solution. Uh, so that'll be, you know, something to hold your breath for. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm I'm hungry for some opportunity. I'm smelling opportunity in the water today as the market bleeds. Um, let's see. SV spec. Let's go up the arrow 
forms in master presentation. What positions are you in, Selena? What are some of your holdings? thousand tons of jute crude oil so it sounds like energy is the opportunity here so far as what I'm hearing it's a Korean ship I did not know that Serena if you haven't already please 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 Smash that like button, smash, 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 smash that subscribe button, and ring the little bell next to it so that you get notified every single time we drop a new video, every time we go live, and we're making money up in here, which is every single day the stock market's open. All right, back to our stack hunt. While we, we pursue the Suez Canal opportunities in the background, let's take a look at SV merging with Aero Farms. Where's our investor presentation? Oh crap, this is gross. Let me just download it. Awesome, Selena. Thank you. I'm waiting for this page to load, as you can see. They, they've got this set up terribly. I just want to download it. Yeah, and taking that route around Africa, that's the temporary solution. And think about how that's going to affect, you know, not only the people waiting on those shipments, but people um, uh, who run those companies, that's going to tremendously affect their bottom line. That's going to be, you know, substantially more expensive to go 5,000 miles all the way around rather than going, you know, 100 and, what is it, 100 and, uh, 150 miles straight through. Um, that's going to add a lot of overhead. There's going to be a lot of additional fuel. Um Gates is USA biggest farmland owner. Bezos is picking up hundreds of acres of farmland opening. Good, good point, Savvy. Dude, oh my god, look at how long this has taken to load. This is insane. Why would they ever host their why, why would this be the link to their presentation? APPH. we're going to do SV and then it might make sense for us to go look at App Harvest after as well. I think someone else brought that up the other day. Scott, you did. You brought up App Harvest. There it is. Good. Let's take this. I'll put it in the sheet for us, though. Put this over here. This is SV. They are merging arrow. Agriculture. No. 
technology and innovation. Uh, we got some sharp people in, the, in this uh, in this community, Selena. Savvy Money Show. They don't just call anybody Savvy Money Show. They call him Savvy Money Show for a reason. And I haven't come up with a catchy tagline for Scott yet, but I'm thinking on it, Scott. If you got one, you know, for Scott favorite, we can definitely you know start throwing that one out there. But yeah, they they know their stuff. These guys, they they watch they watch the world through the same lens that I do. It's nice to have people who watch the world that same way to see opportunities, you know, over one another's shoulders that are telling you about opportunity that you may be missing because we're, we're investigating. You can only investigate in depth um, or notice opportunity uh, in so many places. Savvy, I'll go ahead and pin that one. Free Discord right there. Got a whole community in there. This is only one of our channels as well. We've got Burner Market Trading, that is the main channel. I have my own. I like to do due diligence. I like to go look at the fundamentals of companies. I like to value invest. You know, I'll make sure that whatever I'm buying into, I'm getting a good deal on, getting a good price, and my money's going to grow in it. Because, you know, if flat screen TVs, if, you know, 4K TVs were super super hot and i think that 4k tvs are great and they told me i needed to pay five thousand dollars for a 4k tv well i'd say that's not really worth it aren't those things only worth like i kind of get i used to get one for 400 bucks and they go yeah it's really high in demand right now so it's five thousand dollars today you can take it or leave it i'll probably say i'm gonna wait on that one you know i'm gonna wait till it's 500 bucks again buy it then uh i don't think about you know stocks the same way just because tesla's a great company doesn't mean i want to go pay 700 bucks for a share because it's in high demand right now if that demand to die down, there'll be better opportunities later on. So that's my style of play over here. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get panicked in the day to day because of that. Oh, savvy's an app. Savvy's an animal. Don't let him. Don't let him uh, be so modest. Okay, let's look at our enterprise value. We're looking over here at. 856 million and now we're looking at 1.23 billion what the hell's going on with this uh we're looking at 1.23 billion dollars for the equity value after the deal goes final and they get all of this cash infused into the company so equity value is what we really want to know here but we'll start with enterprise that's what they're basing their equity off of I got it all on a spreadsheet too. You can access all this information. Selena, I've got, you know, I'm going to bring this over just in case you haven't seen it before. Um, I got a spreadsheet for public companies, SPAC mergers that haven't gone, you know, that have not finalized yet. Uh, I'll put the terms of the deal, projected revenues, all that good stuff. Public companies has their balance sheets, like all their earnings are broken down for you. Um, and then OTCs, it's still a work in progress. OTC market's kind of dried up right now. So, we're not too focused on making that perfect, but that's on my website as well for free. So you can access, you know, all this information whenever you want. Just if, uh, if you're interested, follow the link in my bio below. I'm sorry, in my description. Uh, there's like a five minute long video that you can watch to, to know how to access it for free. Okay, so this is our equity value over here. Two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got one point two three billion dollars. This is going to be current as of today, twenty sixth. Current stock price. Does it have a market cap? Yep. Current stock price, ten oh nine. Gives us a market cap of two hundred and ninety million dollars today. What's that going to adjust to? We'll know in a second. Nine ninety one. So it's up about. It's up. 18 cents today 
Oh, I could have just looked at the 18 cents number above, but I didn't. It's up 18 cents today. And this is going to give us a 290. $290 million. What are we getting in the deal? We're going to get... No, we don't want convertible notes. This is what we're getting, 18.7%. And our sponsors and founders are getting 3.5% as well. Okay, put this down. 18.7%, 3.5%. And that's going to give us a post-merger adjusted market cap of $1.3 billion. Makes sense. The price has not really moved from $10, so... Um, you know, the, the, the market or the post merger adjusted market cap is not really going to move either. So, something to keep an eye on though as the price goes up, watch how that affects that post merger adjusted market cap. Well, we might believe this company is worth $1.3 billion and it can grow to $2 billion, for example. You know, if that post merger adjusted market cap grows to $3 billion all of a sudden and it's only at $15 a share, you know, can you really expect that share price to go to 30 and be a $6 billion company? I don't know, that's, you know, that's subjective at that point, but that's what I like to watch. I like to see two or three times this number. Uh, that's what I consider to be, you know, healthy price. Anything beyond that, so you start to get some growth priced in there, um, some projections priced in. All right, let's go. Let's take a look at the revenue. When you're pitching a company, I've always, you know, I've preached this before on here too, uh, I would miss from my experience of running, you know, starting multiple companies. You always want to start with the why, right? You know, why are we doing this in the first place? What problem are we addressing? Okay, so we're addressing this massive problem. Then you go to the how. Here's how we're addressing it. And then you go to the what. This is what exactly we're doing, our features, all of the cool shit we're doing. Um, that's coming full circle now as to how we're solving that problem, which is the why. Uh, when I'm looking at, at an investment, though, I'm, I'm not starting with that typically. I do want to see what the problem is. I do want to know how they're, they're planning to address it. But I like to look at the numbers first, make sure I'm getting a good deal, make sure they got cash coming in, because even though they might be solving a problem in the future, they might be doing something like going to space, which I think is going to be um, massive in the future as well. If they're not making any revenue, I'm not going to give them my, you know, my hard earned money to invest in their company just for the sake of funding their research and development, which is what you're doing with those pre-revenue companies. You're just funding research and development. So that's not always guaranteed to generate you an ROI, which is why I like to go with companies that have existing revenue and believable growth. All right, where, are, where is our revenue? Capital, tenant improvements, annual revenue. I don't know what model five is. There we go. Revenue. So as they expand the number of farms they have, revenue will adjust accordingly. You gotta make sure that the demand's there for it. But look at our existing revenue. We don't have any revenue existing right now, Savvy, so you know what I'm gonna say there. But this might be a different case scenario. This is not a space company, so um, you know, not having any existing revenue, they're supposed to have four billion or four million dollars this year, which is not much. But um, let's see, let's see what we believe in here. A bit does not, like we said, it's not uncommon. They're not shoving it in our face, so it's different. Cross profits, nice to know. Profit margin will be something we want to watch here. Let's see if we can find another one. Why are they comparing it to Monster Energy? Well, we just did this the other day. All right, let's go back to the revenue page. I'm tired of snooping. Get sort of revenue. zero dollars as of 2020 Oops, as of 2020 and then we're going to go all the way to 
2026, so we're going to do 2022, 2024, 2026. Alright, 13 million in 2022. I think that's pretty easy to accomplish if we got some funding. I'd be surprised if they couldn't do it. 163 million in 2024, and then 553 million. So you can see how this scales up. Is here. That'd be something we got to know more about. It's going to be 2022, 2024, and 2026. What does this give us for a compound annual growth rate? Let's go find out. Let's see what's now stuff. We'll go back to it later. We're going from zero. And we're going to 553. Ooh, that's going to be tough. No, 0 to 553 is done. And we're doing that from 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 years. Growth priced in there. It's going to give us a compound annual growth rate. Uh, I mean, that gives us values beyond the scope. I've seen them do it before. Maybe it doesn't like zero. Yeah, it doesn't like zero. Let's do, I think it was a four million in 2021 is what they want to do. Let's just assume that that's correct. And that's going to go to 2021 instead now. I think four million is pretty achievable there. I can I can get behind that. Uh, 553, and this is going to be in five years instead of six now. 168%, so not, you know, the most conservative growth rate we've seen, but they're they're starting from scratch, so I'd expect to see that being higher. It's different growing a company from zero to 553 million versus growing a company from, you know, 300 million to 500 million. Of course, the growth rate's going to be different. So I'm not super alarmed. 168% there, and that's 2021 to 2026. Total addressable market. How big is our pie? How big is the pie, Savvy? Yo, 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 Brogan, what's going on, my friend? How are you doing today? I also, I got to talk to you later. I've got um, some things I want to run by you that I think you might be able to help with. This market is weird, but we're, we're young and we're figuring that out, which is nice. It's got to make sure we're learning from all these instances, right? We lose money. Why did we lose money? What could we have done better so we don't lose money next time? It's very hard in trading. That's why I don't trade. Uh, I haven't figured it out. I'm not smart enough to trade. I'm, I'm, my brain works a little bit differently. Aero Farms Opportunity. Food production, yeah. Forget who's got that theory as well. Um, about population growth and the need for uh, food uh, food production to grow along with it. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna run into some issues. This is what is Thomas? Is it Thomas Matthew? I don't remember his theory. Someone's theory. Population growth. Alas, what's going on? How are we doing today, my friend? You making some money? Or are you not making money? Or you're losing money today and you're looking to buy some, uh, some, some more products on this great liquidation sale we're seeing in the market today? How nice is the market to, to reward us with a liquidation sale on a Friday, folks? Given the weekend, getting to buy stuff for cheap. I look at Open Door. I had to pay twenty nine dollars a share for Open Door five days ago. Today I can get it for twenty two. What a great deal!
absolutely I can definitely do that it's more so I've got you know I've got my clubhouse that I run and we've got our uh, discord we're setting up but we're finding that you know it's a little bit disorganized and I think that you might be the uh, the right person to bring in um, that has a vision of how, how discord should be organized because I did not set up PCs uh, discord um, or anything involved in there and you from our initial talks you know a pretty decent amount about discord uh, and the capabilities that are well beyond where my brain goes all right where's our market at global leafy greens okay 1.4 trillion dollar industry we like that probably why gates and bezos are getting into it yeah, 1.4 trillion dollars what did it have up there? It had 1.4 trillion, but then it also had these baby things. So do they do they do this all, Savvy? Do you know? Do they do leafy greens and they do all fresh produce? Or are they only doing, because if we're going to put $1.4 trillion, I want to make sure that this is, you know, actually what they do. Or if they only do, you know, um, leafy greens, we should probably put $103 billion. guys have not already this is my quick reminder for y'all as well please 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 smash that like button smash smash so smash that subscribe button and ring the little bell next to it so you get notified every single time i drop a new video every single time we go live and we're making money up in here which is every single day the stock market's open folks don't matter if it's red or green 500 different produce okay thank you savvy money show my friends savvy money show give my man some support and some love really quick TAM is 1.4 trillion dollars trillion by 2023 TAM is 103 billion for global greens All right. Projected to grow to 103 billion by 2023. They have, what do you say, 500 different, or they grow 500 different fresh produce products. All right. He's got he's got eyes in the sky. He's like he's like my sniper. Every time when I wake up and I see Savvy's firing off in Discord because he's six hours ahead of us in the UK, uh, I, I'm, I make sure I read through everything. I want to see what he's thinking. He he is my eyes in the sky. He's the guy. You know he's the one guiding my way. 
he always brings good opportunities to the table that we can investigate a little bit further. All right, all right, so then 550. Also, vegetables being grown underwater. That's a thing. All right, let's get our competitive here. So they yield more crops quicker, which you need. For population grows, we need to make sure that our uh, produce production grows along with it, if not a little bit uh, more. SK Hill, hello, hello, how are you, my friend? Welcome to the stream. How's your portfolio looking today? You making some money? What positions are you in? We're looking at SV right now. This is um, uh, SPAC merging with Aero Farms. And Aero Farms it looks like a really great company. Um, anything in agriculture right now too. Savvy Money Show pointed out. Bill Gates is swooping up farmland everywhere he can. Bezos is starting to swoop up farmland. Follow where the big brains and the big money is and where it's going. They, they tend to be uh, a, a little bit ahead of, of, of where most minds work. So agriculture must be something that we should pay attention to. Good time to learn up on it. All right, so how do you make sure that all of us people have good info exactly? Awesome. Comment from them earlier. Step away. Always willing to be the Gen Z, <laughs> yes. Uh, I need. Uh, I, I love having the 19-year-old. That you know, again, I always give Brogan the hype. Hype him up too much sometimes, but you know, Brogan is way uh, more mature and way smarter and just further along than most 19-year-olds. He's a good, good source if you're looking to get in, tap into the minds of the younger generation. I say as a 25-year-old, you have no clue. What do you? Um, what are your interests, K, uh, as Cahill? I don't know how you stumbled upon it either, but we're happy to have you here. Maybe the Suez Canal brought you in? We were doing that in the beginning. We're going to be touching back on that as we bounce uh, back and forth from uh, for opportunity. Let's see, yield, water use, 95% more efficient, quality, nice. Consistency is key. Lowering costs, even better. All right, let's go find our competitors. Yes, yes, thank you, Savvy, for the reminder. If you haven't already, folks, please, please, please smash that like button. Smash, smash, so smash that subscribe button and ring the little bell next to it so you get notified every time we drop a new video, every time we go live in here and we're making money up in here, which is every single day the stock market's open. TTCF, that's um, Tattooed Chef, right? Partnerships, love it. All right, let's get the partnerships down. That is one of my favorite things to talk about rather than competitors. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Hanks, what's going on? You changed your, your picture. Scott, Sean Cahill. I don't know. Is that Sean Cahill? interested in SK Hill. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call you K Hill. I don't want to keep calling you SK Hill. S S dot K Hill. Ooh, that's got a nice ring to it. 
What are your interests? What do you do for a living? Where are you from? Welcome to our community. Some berries and other markets, okay. Berries and other markets. And I'm looking at you see Ravers Plant Reading Center. Unfortunately, you can't see close enough there, but yeah, it's just too small on my screen. I can't see. I can't see the picture. Unfortunately, hangs. USDA. Okay, Richard, go broke. Try. Hopefully, not going broke, right? to berries and other markets. Oh shit. There we go. Now what we got over here? We got our plant made pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, and cosmeceuticals. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. We want to. We want to. We want to know our new friend. We don't want to. You know. I don't want to put pressure on you. I don't want to scare you away. Uh, but we're we're a welcoming subculture in here. Good group of folks. I'll start. My name is Mike. They, you know, a lot of people like to refer to me as Low Daddy, Low Stradamus, Low Rider. Whichever way you want to chop it up, you can call me whatever you want. Um, I'm from Chicago. I'm an online marketer, uh, a business growth consultant. Um, I went to University of Texas at Austin um, before coming back home to Chicago after graduation. Um, I just love business. I've spent five years in entrepreneurship. Uh, I've spent three, the first three years when I was still in college, I... Uh, started a an app. Uh, we raised slightly under a million dollars in funding before ultimately getting beaten up by uh, Instagram, just taking our idea and making it just a feature to their existing product because they had way more money than we did. Um, but it was a great learning experience, and you know, I've not I have not taken a new course out of, outside of entrepreneurship since then. So okay, you're from Ireland, about an hour south of Dublin. I have uh, uh, my video editor. Uh, a good friend of mine as well. He actually just moved to Ireland about two months ago. Um, I forget where he, where is he? He's not in. I don't think he's in Dublin. Or, um, he's not in Dublin. He's in. Um, where is Joel at? I don't know. I was just talking to him earlier today. But Savvy is from the UK. We got, we got a community all over the world. National Institutes of Health. Most of us trade full or at least part-time personally. Yeah, Brogan is a freshman in college. Been trading for about five years because of crypto and stuck in the middle of the U.S. Kansas. Yeah, yeah Brogan does not enjoy being uh, in Kansas, but he's doing the right things. He's making a lot of the right moves that you don't see many 19-year-olds make. Advanced certainly not even myself when I was 19. I was I was mature for my age, but Brogan's way smarter than I was. Services.
Yeah, we got we got members in our community, uh, Cahill, that you know, I I my portfolio looks like chum change compared to most of theirs. We got you know people making hundreds of thousands of dollars in here. We got people making millions of dollars in here. Um, I am not on that level yet, but you know, we got a pretty big stock community over here. Uh, I drop videos on you know stocks. I stream every day for for stocks and finding new opportunities out there before everyone else has found them, uh, based on the fundamentals of companies. Uh, and then also I, I run, um, you know, my own company, obviously do work for my clients. And then I run a clubhouse club called teach us something cool. We meet every Wednesday. So that's the other content you'll see on this channel. I got a new video dropping, hopefully by the end of the weekend, that's my video editor. You've got to get the, the edit back to me. Um, but we film every, or we record every Wednesday night on a new topic of just learning something cool. It's like a book club, but for, um, learning cool new shit. <laughs> What is this say? I can't see this. Precision pip. Okay. Precision indoor plants. Okay, now I can zoom back out. I don't know what this is. Oh, yay. SF, green venues, FFAR. least we've got this one technology components we got Nokia Bell Labs I'll put a little note down here Slide 30 of investor presentation or complete partnership breakdown. Okay. We love strategic partnerships. Future commercial expansion into new markets like very harvesting bands. Is he from Flagstaff? Is that where he's at? Ah, I can't think of where Joel's at. He's in, he's in university over there. That's not Dublin. He told me that. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Let's see. We have people are starting with a couple thousand. Yep. Co-development with CRISPR. Use this AI, got you. Mm, these are not peers. Yeah, I guess. Awesome. Sounds good, Brogan. Uh, I will see you either today or we'll, we'll talk. We'll be we'll be in touch for sure. Um, yeah, I guess that is their their benchmarking. Okay, let's let's use those. This is gonna be for. Sustainable high growth food. Mount meat, fresh pet, and app harvest. Okay. 
I don't know if I really want to use this one either. Well, Monster Energy, I definitely don't want it in there. I'm not going to include them. They're not really a competitor. Right, roof. Food and beverages. So I'm not going to include Tattooed Chef either, but I do think Fever Tree, I'm not familiar with them. They sound like they could be a good um, realistic competitor based on their name. And then, what is this? Something Vital Farms. Like this. 300%. other competitors in there. Oh. Champs, let's go we'll get our. Oh my god, I keep messing this up. Let's go look at it. Good. Do you see any other competitors on here? to see this. We want the team. Vertical farming, we use the industry, love that. Sustainability. Okay, let's bring this over here. Quick breakdown. All right, so we got this. Let me know if y'all can't see that. I can make it a little bigger if you need. Enterprise value right here. 
856 uh, million is what they valued the company at um, before making this deal with them. They can public through this reverse merger. Uh, after the transaction goes final, they get all that cash infused in the company. We're going to be looking at a true value of 1.2 billion um, if their enterprise value is accurate plus their cash. Uh, price hasn't moved, so post merger adjusted market cap isn't really going to move either um, until you see, start to see that price rise you know, from 1009 and the market cap rises accordingly too. Um, Looking at four million dollars in rev of revenue in 2021, we've got 13 million in 2022, 163 million in 2024, 553 million in 2026. That gives us a compound annual growth rate of 168 percent, which is pretty aggressive compared to most uh, companies we look at. But this is also it's one of those companies that is currently, if not pre-revenue, they have like a little bit of revenue, but it's not much, you know. So that's to be expected. If they already were doing, you know, $500 million in revenue and they said that in the next six years they're going to grow to, you know, at that, that growth rate, that I wouldn't really believe that. That's not really achievable, I don't think. Um, total addressable market currently is $1.4 trillion for fresh produce uh, or global fresh produce. Uh, it's, a, it's like $100 billion, or like I think it's like $75 billion. I got it in my notes um, on the right. Once we get there, we'll see it uh, for just global leafy greens. Um, here are their competitors as listed on there. Um, in the valuation benchmarking, here are their partnerships. You can see what their partnerships are for. Check out this page if you want more information on it. Here are some existing customers. And then check out this page of this presentation to see what the customers have to say about them. Here's a link that you'll be able to click on uh, when I upload to my website. All free, as always. Uh, Strong and experienced leadership team. Oh shit, what slide is that on? Nope. I know, I saw I got a download today. What's up with that? What's going on, Connor? How are you doing today? This is, this is something we got to talk about, too, uh, Connor, when I see you next. Um, Aero Farms, dude. Savvy brought this one to my attention. For it made a great point in the beginning, which is why it piqued my interest. Bezos and Gates are scooping up farmland like crazy. There's got to be a good reason why the big brains are making that move right now. This is slide nine. Okay.
I am not doing a strict SPAC hunt. We are in here talking about the Suez Canal, you know, periodically as well. Um, can break down some earnings reports. Um, yeah, the EU controls the food, exactly. Uh, can break down some earnings reports. What do you want to see? What, what companies are you interested in? Given still stuck. Tilray, do you want to know Tilray's earnings? You want to talk about that arbitrage we talked about before? If that would still be a, a play here. <laughs> All right, guys, just checked in on Suez Canal. Looks like the Evergreen is or Ever Given is still stuck. Have not thought of what our opportunity is there yet. Just a lot of crude oil, but I don't know if it's going to be a, a strong enough effect to uh, give us an opportunity to get in, like a solar company. Um, where their, you know, stock's going to skyrocket overnight because of it. Um, yeah, let's look at Tilray. So I don't think they had any recent earnings they filed. Looks like they get their 10K, which is great. Let's look at that. Hundred and eighty pages. Very fun, very fun. Okay, what do we got? What are the important ones? Where's our balance sheet at? Financial statements there, okay. All right, let's do it. I haven't broken down a balance sheet in a couple days now. I have been growing hungry for one. Ticker is T L R Y. So the red is his cannabis. Current as of three twenty six, twenty twenty one. Let's get the most updated price. 2131, give us this market cap. Okay. Previously closed at 2283, so we are down today. 3.82 billion dollars. Alright, back to our filing. This is going to be expressed in thousands of U.S. dollars. Perfect. I love when it's broken down in U.S. dollars. Gates is pushing his medical company forward via SPAC. So once that goes through, he may notice this. Ooh. What um, what SPAC are they going public through? What's the name of his medical company? Toll Assets. Current period. Current last year. 
945 million dollars okay end of 2019 we had 50 about 50 million less and six three three zero three so yeah 49.6 million less uh total liabilities we have reduced our liabilities as well which means good things for our shareholder equity see what we reduced it how much we reduced it by gives an idea as to what our shareholder equity is going to become reduce that by 39 million increased our assets by 49 we'll call it 50 million so we're going to be looking about a 90 million dollar increase if i had to guess let's see our debt to asset ratio is 0.6 so it's slightly above you know 0.5 meaning that we are slightly funding our operations on debt, but not too aggressively, so I'm not too concerned there. And that's what you'd expect in a relatively new industry like this, with a lot of research and development, and uh, trying to scale and grow operations. Um, current assets, let's see, right here, 347 million. And our current liabilities, 181 so we're about to have a i believe it's going to be like a two to one ratio let's see exactly yep 1.9 so we have healthy liquidity in the company um anything above 1.2 is healthy you know the higher we can get the better obviously but uh liquidity allows us to to pounce on opportunities for growth amongst other things Stockholder equity, I said I think it's going to increase by about 90 million. Let's see. Stockholder equity right now, 373 million, 899. Last year was 285, 271, 23, 88.6 million dollars for an increase this year. That is great to see as a shareholder that we have any preferred shareholders we need to pay out. statement next shares also average of shares throughout the year from quarter to quarter so if they just had a big offering in q4 for example it's not going to pick that up so our, our figures are going to be off and we can we can break it down with the um, pricing later on or with the uh, market cap and we can divide that by the current price to get that market cap and that's going to be outstanding shares all right revenue Expressed in thousands, so we'll have three zeros at the end 2020, 2019, 2018. Only going to focus on these two top line, and then we want to know what the bottom line was. Now, give us our earnings. Are our earnings or deficit? Okay, revenue. We did $210 million in 2020 versus $166 million in 2019. But our net income, or our net loss in this case, after all the expenses, this is our bottom line. Two hundred and seventy-one in the whole. Negative two hundred and seventy-one million. Not great to see, but our profit margin is increasing, or it's improving at least. Which is what we need to see if our if we're not profitable yet.
Okay, so our profit margin has improved from negative 192% to negative 128%. Um, not great numbers, and the reason that you know you want to watch that, uh, besides for the obvious reasons, when you're not profitable as a company, when you're that unprofitable, it's going to eat away from your assets, right? You, know, you have to pull money from there. And when your assets start to get more and more depleted, your company's assets fall below what their liabilities are, so you're insolvent. What are the, you know, what are, what are your realistic options if you're a shareholder that you can expect the company to make to stay alive? Um, one, you can expect them to file for some form of bankruptcy for restructuring. Uh, two, before they do that, they're probably going to go out and they're going to look for new investors. And they're going to have additional public offerings with those investors. With all, you know, new, new public offerings, they can't take your shares away. So they got to put more shares, pump them into the market, and it's going to dilute your existing shares value. Because, you know, your, your share value is just uh, this number right here up, oh, above total shareholder equity. And you divide that by um, total number of outstanding shares. You throw more outstanding shares in there and makes your value, the value of your shares worth less. That's all it is. So... Watch that profit margin. Make sure it continues to improve and improve drastically in this case. But this is going to be typical of companies that have a lot of research and development. You're going to have way less revenue than you do have expenses. Or, yeah, yeah. Your expenses are going to far outweigh your revenue. Notes. again. We're just going to do a simple calculation for the outstanding shares because I don't want to take their weighted total. It's not going to be, it's not, I don't think it's what it's going to come out to be. You know, we can take a gander. They're saying that their weighted total is going to be 126 million shares. I think it might be more than that. It's going to equal... that by this yeah there are 179 million shares floating around right now so that would have definitely skewed our data a little bit we don't want skewed data we want as accurate data as possible so we've got healthy liquidity you can see right there 1.9 anything above 1.2 is healthy we got uh, above a 0.5 here of debt to asset ratio, meaning that we're financing operations uh, mainly off of uh, debt versus shareholder equity. A little bit riskier of an investment, but you know, not the end of the world. We expect this. Uh, we can add book value per share of about two dollars and nine cents, giving us a PB price to book ratio of 10.22. Remember, we're looking for anything under 1.0 for that, like you know, guaranteed undervalue. Uh, currently, and then anything under 3.0 is also what I look for uh, as being highly likely to be under undervalued. So, something to look at. Um, what I think Connor might have been referencing, uh, we talked about before, is the arbitrage opportunity we had. So, rather than harp on this, let me go ahead and drop my thoughts actually in my notes. I'm looking 
is negative 192 percent. This is what I think Connor may have been alluding to, I'm not exactly sure. So essentially we need to get both their prices to see if the opportunity exists. And I can put it on a spreadsheet here. Let's just go and save this first and foremost. Let's do this. This is gonna be merger arbitrage. So we're going to have Afria here. One more actually. And we're going to have Tilray over here. Right. Share price. Just formatting off the top of my head, so it's gonna be. Well, if we wanted to keep the sheet like this, we'd need to, to reformat it, make it pretty. Number of shares. Um, value of shares. I think that's all we need to know, right? Oh, wait. Zero point eight three is what you're getting. So every share of Afria you have at the time of their merger, when it goes final, it's going to give you zero point eight three shares of Tilray. Um, let's go look at the current prices though. It's twenty one thirty two now. Okay. And on Afria, we're going to have. Sixteen eighty six. We're going to invest a thousand dollars in there, and that's going to give us. divided by this let's take these and we're gonna make that round value of our shares is not even $1,000, okay. So, 
this one will be blank. This is going to equal this times our conversion value, 0.83, gives us 49 shares of Tilray, and then the value of our shares here is going to be equal to this multiplied by the current share price. So there's not really not an opportunity here anymore. Before the gap was so large that you know the opportunity was massive. Um, it was like you'd invest a thousand dollars and you'd immediately get twenty six hundred dollars that are of value in shares. But I, I anticipated that this gap would shrink as we got closer and closer to the merger. So you know before you know you invest a thousand dollars, it'd be worth thousand dollars over here. It'd be worth like two thousand and two hundred dollars or something. I have in my notes from like three months ago. Um, but as we get closer and closer to Q2 2020, when this merger is going to go final, that's where you're starting to see uh, that gap close up. So, where's, you're, you know, you, you, there's arbitrage here still, you're making $49 for free, essentially. But I expect this gap to continue shrinking more and more as this opportunity continues continues to dwindle away. So I wouldn't, you know, advise investing in uh, merger arbitrage opportunity over here. I think it's already been swallowed up. Um, but I do think that this company combined is a strong enough force in the cannabis industry to take down a company like Canopy Growth, who leads the industry currently. So something to keep an eye on. Okay, what other companies do we wanna see? Mm, let's do this. Maybe one more spec. Then I'm gonna hop off for the day. For the weekend, I should say. IPOs before the price goes up. That sounds nice. I like that if I'm on, I'm on an IPO e-holder. We work. We did. I, I was all over this one about a month ago. I don't think we were a good company. Uh, I thought they were. They're, they're essentially a big holdings company. They need a bunch of capital. I like the idea too. Shared, you know, offices, but. Uh, you know, we can take a look at WeWork. I've been wanting to see that investor presentation. What else did I miss this week while I was gone? Busy week, busy, busy week for me. Look at all those space specs. Thank you, Savvy. Appreciate that, my friend. If you have not already, friends, please, please, please smash that like button. Smash, smash, so smash that subscribe button. And ring the little bell next so that you get notified every single day. We drop a new video every single time we go live. And we're making money up in here, which is every single day the stock market's open, folks. All right, let's go look at WeWork. They were, you know, this company was... Oh, man, the butt of all jokes about two years ago now. Crazy to think it's been that long. Bow X. What's their investor presentation?
sheet up over here. It's going to be for bow X. They are going public because they're taking we were public. I'll bring this over here. As we digest this investor presentation together. Clear path to profitability. Okay. Let's do this. Let me change the title over here from Suez Canal. I don't want to clickbait anyone because we haven't really talked to Suez Canal. Well, fuck it. Let's change this to WeWork. Flexible workplace. Okay, where is our transaction overview? Well, this will be nice to see too. Your flexible workspaces. Workstations, a lot of numbers, a lot of customers, big names on there. I, to, I got laughed at, and I think that you know it still might not be a good company, but they they've got a solid long-term business model. They're collecting money from people on uh, you know rent, so essentially they're, they're real estate in that aspect, and then it, they're also I believe a, a big holdings company. Because like they're getting part of, you know, they might act, act as like an incubator for a lot of these companies, and thus get a percentage of uh, equity in their companies. And if that's the case, there's a lot of long-term money there if these companies become successful. Where is our transaction overview? NGA shareholder meeting to approve business combination with Lion Electric. I'm assuming that's probably going to go through. Battery supply agreement with BMW. Ooh. I know BMW is trying to go electric. Most companies are. They've got decent existing revenue. Transaction overview. There it is. Okay. Let's see what our equity and enterprise value is. There we go. Enterprise value is. Why is that? Oh. Okay. This is another case like uh, Renew Power. It looks like they're going to go uh, when this goes through and they get all this cash infusion to the business. Uh, at this enterprise value, they're going to be using a large portion of that to pay off a large chunk of debt. Um, there you go. Pro form of debt, $2.9 billion. The cash being infused, one point, almost $9 billion. So your equity value is going to be below your enterprise value, but you want to see them pay off debt. We want to get this company into a... Uh, we want to limit our liabilities, reduce our liabilities while increasing our assets the best we can so that our shareholder equity uh, improves quarter after quarter, year after year. Um, we got we got This is a good move, I think. Um, 
enterprise value. Eight, nine, six, six. Equity value, seven, nine, two, seven. Looking at this card as of today, 326. Let's look at the share price. I'm assuming no one's going to be really eager to get on WeWork. It might take some time to get it hyped up. Previously closed at 973, so it's actually it's up almost 9% today. Wow. Um, everything else is bleeding, but WeWork is printing money over here. Alright, there's WeWork. Now we're getting how much of this? We're getting uh, X 6.1%, plus our founder and sponsor shares 1.1%. Pipe we don't worry about. Those won't get introduced until later. So we're getting 6.1%, founders, sponsors getting 1.1%, we're getting 72 total, giving us a post-merger adjusted market cap of $8.84 billion, which is, it obviously hasn't run much, just keep an eye on that, see how it adjusts as uh, share price goes up. We're looking for two to three times, you know, the, the greater value of enterprise or equity in this case. It's a little over $8 billion, almost $9 billion. We're below that still, so I think there might be opportunity here. Let's go look at the revenue. Wow. They didn't even suffer at all. They're making, they're bringing in $3.2 billion in revenue. Or third. What's our profitability look like? What's our bottom line? Let me take us for projections. I don't know why they exclude this, excluding China code. Interesting. Highly unprofitable, it would, it would appear. Even with their bit, uh, when do they become profitable? What are they paying for? I mean, profitability is going to be what you got to look at here because they've got the revenue coming in, they've got the demand for the products. How they become profitable is not really clear to me. Hmm. Well, we'll worry about that later. Let's plug in some projections. We'll do Starting at Let's see if we'll take this. We're going to We're going from twenty twenty to one, two, three, four, four years of growth. 
pretty conservative growth rate, 21.8%. That's from 2020 to 2024. Now, where is our total addressable market? Microsoft, Tesla, Johnson and Johnson, Snowflake, Amazon, Walmart, Peloton. You guys 
recognize any of these names? Goldman Sachs, BlackRock. Wow. Spotify. United Healthcare. I think they're the largest healthcare provider now. Um, I mean, no, that's that's United Wholesale Mortgage. Never mind. J.P. Morgan. IBM. Merrick. Merck. Airbnb. Why can't I think of what this is right here? Real quick, global land partnerships. It's going to be Blackstone Group, EXP, Brookfield. All good, Savvy. Appreciate you coming around. I was later than I usually stream, so I will see you next week, my friend. Have yourself a great weekend. And let's make some money. I'll talk to you in the Discord, I'm sure. We're about to wrap up over here in the next five minutes. If you guys have not already, please, please, please smash that like button. Smash, smash, smash that subscribe button. And bring the little bell next to it so you get notified every single time we drop a new video, every single time we are going live and making money up in here. Just every single day, stop the fucking soaking. Stone investments. RXR. Starwood Capital Group. Tissue Inspire. Jesus, what's going on up here?
1.6 trillion.
works. Police group. and then depart for the weekend, my friends. All right, so revenue is very high. Billions of dollars. So, more attractive. Hey. Concern is that they are unprofitable, which has always been criticism they received. Uploaded to y'all by the end of day today. I'm hoping to drop a video. I keep saying this every weekend, but I just been stupid swamped. Um, I want to get a video out there. Uh, just kind of breaking down my existing plays for y'all because um, I know you guys ask about them pretty often. Um, and rather than me just reiterating myself over and over again on streams, it would be better that way. So 
look for that over the weekend. I'll drop it in the Discord. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in this week. I know I've been on a different schedule than I typically am, but this week has been nothing uh, short of eventful, uh, which is a good thing, though. I've had a lot of meetings and a lot of work I had to, had to tend to in the mornings, which is usually when I stream, so I had to regret to the afternoons. But again, appreciate you all for tuning in throughout this entire week, and I'm hoping that next week I'll get back onto uh, my old stream schedule. Only difference is I'm going to be streaming from California, going to visit some some old buddies uh, who were in my first company with me, and um, yeah, catch up with them, see how they're doing. So I'll be in California streaming, we'll see how that goes, we'll see what I'm going to get on every day, um, but I'll keep you all posted in the Discord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't already, please, please, please smash that like button, smash that, smash that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it so you get notified every single time I drop a new video, hopefully this weekend, every time we go live, and we're making money in here, which is every single day the stock market's open. With that, 